Well, the movie opens with Captain William, an astronaut poised to become the first human on Mars, immersed in the final stages of his rigorous preparation. Alongside him, Captain Emily was gearing up to trail William's pioneering journey, tasked with establishing a base to facilitate the arrival of future Mars colonizers. Amidst the buzz of activity, William embarks on his monumental journey aboard the spacecraft Zephyr, setting off a 270-day solo voyage to the Red Planet. From the confines of Mission Control, Louis, a key figure in the mission's operation, urges William to conduct vital diagnostics on the ship's air circulation system and water reactors, and yet, in a moment of reflection, William pauses to gaze upon Earth through his window, soaking in the sights of his home planet for what might be the last time. As he ventures into the vastness of space, William's routine aboard the Zephyr becomes a blend of essential tasks and personal reflections. He meticulously checks the ship's reactor, indulges in his meal, nurtures plants, and commits to a strict exercise regimen. Throughout his journey, he diligently documents his experiences and observations in a journal. On the twelfth day of his mission, William engages in a video conference with a group of students, illuminating the intricacies of survival on the Martian surface. He shares that while basic supplies like food and fuel have been pre-deposited on Mars, a groundbreaking reactor he developed plays a crucial role in his survival strategy. This reactor, capable of extracting water from the Martian soil, was initially met with skepticism on Earth. Defying doubts, William retreated to the desert, where in a mere three days, he successfully operationalized the reactor in isolation. As the days progressed, William's journey was punctuated by the interaction with various individuals, eagerly enlisting for the second mission on Mars. In a significant encounter several weeks into his journey, William meets with a space station strategically positioned to resupply his expedition. Here he meets Green Streets and other crew members. The station, however, was filled with its own troubles. Failed experiments have resulted in the death of their plants and mice, and the station's captain, Worsley, appears to be grappling with psychological challenges. During a conversation with Green Streets, William faces a profound suggestion to reconsider his mission and return to Earth. There their exchange is abruptly paused when Mission Control announces the launch of Captain Emily from Earth, a moment that evokes a complex mix of emotions in Green Streets and prompts a cryptic remark from Worsley about the unknowns that lie ahead. William's journey through space continues as he engages in a video conference from aboard his spacecraft, and a woman inquires about his unique experience of looking back at Earth, now further away than any human has ever been. William responds in awe, describing the profound sense of intimacy that he feels, despite the immense distance. By the 41st day of his mission, William encounters a minor malfunction in the water reactor. Although it presents a challenge, he welcomes the break from his monotonous routine as he attempts to fix the issue. He observes that his ship has gradually accumulated grime, a combination of decaying plant matter, and his own skin. Reflecting in his journal, William notes the parallels between his situation and that of Green Street and Worsley, whose own mission suffered due to their loss of hope and longing for their families. This emotional turmoil, he mentions, has significantly impacted their ability to carry out their duties effectively. On the 57th day, William is haunted by a disturbing dream where he sees his reactor failing, leading him to consume dirty water. As time progresses, he turns to learning Spanish, a welcome diversion to pass the time in the void of space. During one of his routine tasks of tending to the plants, he realizes that he's lost communication with both Emily and Louis. Eventually re-establishing contact, he learns of a dire situation. Emily's spacecraft has veered off course. Louis informs them that a malfunctioning gyroscope is the culprit, and despite Louis's initial reservations, William steps in, offering his expertise to assist Emily in remotely repairing her gyroscope. With William's guidance, Emily successfully fixes the issue and steers her spacecraft back on course, a testament to their collaborative efforts and resilience in the face of adversity. The narrative then takes a turn on day 66, when Captain William aboard his spacecraft encounters solar flares. While these cosmic events were awe-inspiring, they fortunately pose no immediate danger to his journey. However, the relative calm is short-lived, and by day 81, William faces a significant challenge. 
In his attempts to fix the error with the water reactor, a critical component of his life support system, he unknowingly causes a short circuit in the ship's battery. And this mishap leads to a contamination of his drinking water. Despite the gravity of the situation, William chooses not to report this development to Louis at Mission Control, believing that the circumstances are not yet dire. He adopts a strategy of conversation, reducing his daily water consumption in an effort to manage the dwindling resources. With a strong sense of responsibility for the problem, as it was his actions that caused it, William dedicates himself to finding a solution. Over the coming days, he works relentlessly exploring every possible avenue to fix the reactor. Meanwhile, Louis, sensing something to be amiss, inquires about any potential issues. William, driven by the fear that the mission might be aborted if the truth is revealed, chooses to withhold the reality of the situation, assuring Louis that all is well. The plot thickens when Louis informs William that Emily's gyroscope previously thought to be fixed has failed again, forcing Mission Control to make the difficult decision to turn her spacecraft around. As William's situation grows increasingly desperate with his reserve water supply depleting and his plants dying, the urgency to find a solution intensifies. In a stroke of ingenuity, William turns to the basic principles of nature for inspiration. He begins to collect the small amounts of condensation from the now dead plants, a temporary and insufficient solution, but pretty smart nonetheless. His breakthrough comes when he finds an innovative method to create water directly from the soil, similar to the natural formation of water. By superheating the soil, he successfully extracts hydrogen and oxygen, the fundamental elements of water, and combines them, and with this process he makes water, but the purity level Level wasn't enough for him to consume. As day 161 arrives, William's frustration mounts. He acknowledges the stark reality that even if he reaches Mars, the malfunctioning reactor poses a significant threat to his survival. As the story progresses, a pivotal moment arises when Captain William, facing the harsh realities of his mission's complications, decides to inform Louis at Mission Control about the dire situation. Louis, understanding the gravity of the circumstances, informs William that they will have to turn the spacecraft around in two days. He urges William to use any available resource on the ship to get the reactor working again, but William, with his deep understanding of the spacecraft's intricacies, knows that the chances of remedying the situation are slim. In a moment of reflection, William watches messages from the new recruits who are preparing for the second mission to Mars. He records a message of his own, monitoring about the remarkable human achievements of space exploration, and he speaks about the amazing feat of constructing machines that can propel humans through space, but he emphasizes that beyond the technological marvels, it's the human experience that truly matters. William shares his belief that the essence of such missions lies not in the technology itself, but the human Humanity it serves. He talks about the awe-inspiring possibility of walking on another planet, witnessing a Martian sunset, and experiencing the profound emotions that come with such adventures. To him, these raw emotional experiences are what make the journey truly significant. William reflects on his own journey, recounting the year he spent meticulously planning the mission and designing a machine capable of sustaining life on another planet. He recalls a defining moment during his tests in the desert, and he describes describes a surreal experience where he felt as if he was evaporating, losing sensation in his limbs and becoming one with the desert sand. This experience, which brought him close to the feeling of dying, only to emerge from it, solidified his resolve to undertake the one-way mission to Mars. However, the day to return the spacecraft around arrives, and Louis instructs William to wear his flight suit and take his position in the cockpit, as the ship will be remotely guided back to Earth. Confronted with the apparent failure of his mission, William grapples with a profound decision. In a bold and very defiant move, he ignores Louis' warnings and he will drift off course. William overrides the spacecraft's controls and determined to fulfill his mission, he sets his course for Mars, choosing the unknown over the familiar and embracing the vastness of space as his final frontier. In the later stages of the movie, the narrative delves deeper into Captain William's solitary journey towards Mars. A few weeks after making the fateful decision to continue his mission against the advance of mission control, William finds himself grappling with the enormity of his situation. He records his thoughts on his diary, acutely aware of the risks that he faces without the guidance and support of mission control. He knows that even a slight miscalculation could send him veering a million miles off course from Mars, and additionally, the condition of his ship deteriorates, and he is left to ration every drop of water he can find to sustain 
himself. In his journal entries, William expresses a sense of disappointment and guilt. He is mindful of the many people who've invested their hopes and dreams in his journey, sending him messages of support and encouragement along the way. Now feeling as though he has let them down, his thoughts turn to Emily, his fellow astronaut, who had placed her trust in him. He hopes that she will have the opportunity to embark on another mission to continue the work that they've started together. As William confronts the harsh realities of the situation, he describes a feeling of entrapment within his own creation, his spacecraft. The weight of gravity bears down on him, and he feels something slowly withering away, squeezing out the last remnants of his water supply. He questions the value of prolonging his life for another day or week in such confined and dire circumstances, and in a moment of existential contemplation, he expresses a yearning to immerse himself completely in the vastness of space, contemplating the idea of opening the hatch and stepping out into the unknown. Weeks later, a heavily distorted message from Louis reaches William. Louis tells him that he's nearing Mars and that the people of Earth are rooting for him, and ignited by this message, William makes his final approach to the Martian atmosphere. He transfers to a small ship and successfully lands on the surface of Mars. Landing on the barren landscape, William communicates to anyone who might one day hear his message, announcing his arrival on Mars. He reflects on the lifeless expanse around him, noting that nothing has ever lived or died on that surface. As the movie draws to a close, William gazes over the stark Martian landscape, despite the overwhelming solitude and challenges that he faces, and he holds on to a glimmer of hope for making things right in the alien world. With a sense of resolve, he mentions that perhaps he will live on indefinitely in his environment, a lone pioneer in the vastness of space.